I hear it every week. I'm sure you hear it too. Calm down. What's the big deal? I was spanked as a kid and I turned out fine. And I'm sure most of you are also familiar with the internet's favorite response to this line. I was spanked when I was a kid and I turned out fine. No, you turned into an adult who thinks hitting a child is okay. If you got spanked or beaten as a kid and say you turned out fine but are justifying hitting kids, you did not turn out fine. I was spanked and I turned out fine, says emotionally stunted xenophobic misogynist with 57 guns, two ex-wives, and multiple adult children who refused to speak to him. I think you get the idea. The popular consensus is, If you were spanked as a child, you're not fine. You're not fine. I think this is a pretty compelling argument. It's pithy and direct, and it says a lot in exactly the kind of short length format the internet loves most. All of the activists who promote anti-child battery arguments in memes, TikTok posts, and elsewhere are doing good work, and I'm grateful to them for it. And when this argument comes from people like Derek Horde, whose situational therapist TikTok account I just showcased and highly, highly recommend to all of you, link in the description, I know he's making that argument on a foundation of sound scientific evidence. Horde is an educated and professional mental health expert. When he says people who were spanked as children experience measurable and lasting effects of that trauma, I know that he knows what he's talking about. But I'm not educated or professional. I'm just some cat lady in Mexico with a drinking problem and a cause. I've read the studies, but when people tell me they were spanked as kids and turned out fine, the truth is, I tend to take them at their word. I usually do believe them, but I'm still an anti-child battery activist because the truth is, I don't think it actually matters whether some or even most child battery survivors turn out fine or not. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to proceed from the assumption that these people are right, that some child battery survivors really do turn out fine. And I'm going to tell you about a time when I too turned out fine. Buckle up kiddos, mama's about to get real. Let's get this important fact out of the way. The science is very clear on spanking children. Over the last 50 years, an overwhelming body of evidence has found again and again that spanking has detrimental and long-lasting consequences on a child's socio-emotional development, self-regulation, and cognitive function. And if you're tempted to come at me with some kind of well, maybe beating has those effects, but spanking is different kind of line. A study out of Harvard just earlier this year confirmed that spanking has the same cognitive effects on kids as beating. So just don't, 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 don't bother me with that. Bottom line is, if you were spanked as a child, the science is pretty clear that our brains had a reaction to that trauma and that reaction was not fine, but if you're one of the many, many people who was spanked as a kid and likes to say you turned out fine, I actually do believe you. Sure, I know it's possible that you say that as a coping mechanism or because it's hard to engage with the fact that your parents made a mistake. It's possible you say that because it's hard to engage with the fact that you made mistakes with your own kids. It's possible you say that because you're feeling defensive. But I also think it's possible you say that because you really did turn out fine. <laughs> and I believe you because once upon a time, I too turned out fine. When I was 17, I had penis in vagina sex for the first time. That's an uncomfortably specific way to put it, but I have my reasons for the specificity. And don't worry, it's only going to get more uncomfortably specific from here. So if you need to jump ahead, here's the timestamp you're gonna wanna jump to. At that age, I had ideas about virginity and my first time that in hindsight were extremely bizarre. Like for example, I'd been having anal intercourse with my boyfriend for a few months at that point. And yet for some reason, I still thought of myself as a virgin. <laughs> I had internalized a lot of 90s messaging about what losing your virginity means and there you go. So I had this idea of my first time. I wanted it to be special and romantic and, you know, I wanted Pacey and Joey in the ski lodge from Dawson's Creek. My viewers are all Zoomers. Do you kiddos even know about Pacey and Joey? Do you even know what love is? Let me interrupt this story to clarify a few things. Today, as a mostly inebriated, self-aware spanking fetishist, I have realized that I don't give a shit about sex. I have realized that my paraphilia is my sexual orientation. It is the only way I care 
care to express or receive romantic or sexual attraction, and frankly, it's the most intimate way I express platonic friendship, too. But when I was 17, I hadn't unpacked that suitcase yet, okay? I had been totally obsessed with spanking for as long as I could remember, but at that point, I still thought it was a trauma response to my childhood. And social messaging is a hell of a drug. So back then, I still thought that the first time a dude stuck his dick in me was extra meaningful in some way, and that it would be even more special with candles and rose petals or whatever. <laughs> but that's not how it went down for me. I was hanging out with my boyfriend one afternoon, and we got semi-nude and touchy. He started exploring my vulvular area, let's say, and I said out loud, I don't want to have sex today. He said, okay. Things were getting hot and heavy, so I said again, I don't want to have sex today. I want to wait for it to be special. And he said, okay. So when he unexpectedly shoved his penis inside me, I started crying. He said, oh, uh, do you want me to stop? And I said, still crying, well, you've already ruined my first time, so you might as well finish. So he did. Okay, I think it's time for a short break. Let's all take a deep breath, center our auras, and prepare ourselves for the truly upsetting content that is about to come. A woman's opinions. <laughs> this was a rape. I was raped. I just told you a rape story. But I wasn't traumatized by this. I was irritated by it. I was pissed off. I cried. I felt like the fantasy version of my first time had been stolen from me. But I would have been more upset if someone had stolen my MP3 player. In brief, I turned out fine. This is very obviously not a typical reaction to rape, and I am not here to minimize the seriousness of that crime. A lot of people would have been very traumatized by what happened to me, and their trauma would have been real and valid. I've known many, many people who told me that their fear of rape is greater than their fear of being murdered. A stance that is totally incomprehensible to me, but profoundly sincere to them. And like child battery, science has demonstrated that rape has long-term effects on a survivor's physical and mental health. Maybe I have those effects too. But that doesn't change the fact that I feel fine about it. I really do. I've never had a nightmare or a flashback about this memory. It hasn't affected the way I relate to people with penises or made me hypervigilant in normative romantic or sexual contexts. Sexuality is weird and individual and varied, and trauma is too. I think my rape and other normative incidents of sexual assault don't feel traumatic to me because since I don't have a normative sexual identity, they don't feel particularly sexual to me. Being raped didn't feel like a sexual violation. It felt like a social violation at worst. No more traumatic to me, as I said, than the theft of an mp3 player. That's why I'm not personally persuaded that this actually you're not fine line is the most effective way to change opinions. If someone feels fine about a past experience, it's going to be extremely hard to convince that person otherwise, no matter how many studies you're armed with. If someone tried to convince me that I'm not fine about my rape, I'd be polite, but I wouldn't be persuaded because I'm fine. The thing that I'm not fine about of course, is childhood spankings. I was spanked as a kid and I turned out extremely not fine. That is what felt like a sexual violation to me. That is what felt traumatic to me. That was worse than losing an mp3 player. It was, for me, worse than rape. Much worse. My point is, trauma isn't a recipe. I believe people who were traumatized by rape, and I believe people who, like me, were raped and turned out fine. I also believe people who were super f***ing traumatized by childhood spankings, like I was, and I do believe people who survived child battery and turned out fine. But what I really believe is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether some people turn out fine. What matters is whether some people turn out not fine. A friend in my Discord community posed a very interesting thought exercise recently. Let's assume that some people are spanked as children and really do turn out fine. Let's even assume that that's the majority. On a standard die, there are six sides. Let's say five of those sides say fine, and the sixth side says not fine. Would you roll that die for your child's health? Would you roll that die for your child's happiness? You know what? Let's up the fine factor. What if the die has a thousand sides and 999 of them say fine? Only one of those sides says not fine. The odds are in your favor, but would you take them? If you had a car that exploded one out of every 1,000 times you put your key in the ignition, would you drive that car? Or what if that one deadly side of the die doesn't say not fine? What if? It says your child will feel sexually violated or physically traumatized by you. Would you roll it then? The fact is, we just don't know how many sides this dice has. We don't know how many people feel sexually or mentally traumatized by childhood spankings because every aspect of our culture 
pressures us to not talk about it, to toughen up, to not be such a snowflake, to laugh at it or justify it. When I say that childhood spankings were traumatic for me, the internet loves to for Yorkshireman me by saying things like, You had a life of luxury. I wish I'd only been spanked. When we misbehaved, dad would beat us around the head and neck with a broken bottle if we were lucky. All of this social pressure makes it very difficult to estimate the risk that a person who is spanked as a child will turn out not fine. But it doesn't matter how many sides that die has. It doesn't matter how high the risk is because any risk of sexually or mentally traumatizing a child for a practice that has no proven benefits of any kind is too big a risk. I believe people when they say they were spanked as kids and turned out fine because I also believe it doesn't matter. Just like my relatively ambivalent feelings about my rape don't make rape okay, the fact that some people feel fine about their own childhood abuse doesn't make spanking kids okay. So if you were spanked as a kid and you turned out fine, I believe you. I'm so glad you turned out fine. I was spanked as a kid and I didn't turn out fine. Like I said, I believe you. But the real question is, do you believe me?